Hello, Thousand Pound Pig here, and it's time for another Smite patch video. Now, just over a week ago, I released the video about the Smite's new Conquest map. So this won't be as big as that video, and it won't be as big as what most of these videos will be, because I just there hasn't been much time for the meta to actually change from then. But a lot has changed. The biggest change, of course, is Bellona, the new god. She is the master of war, also a god of war. She is the god of war for the Roman pantheon instead of the Greek, which is, they're both very similar pantheons. The Greek god of war is, um, Ares. But she's a pretty cool design. She's some kind of warrior. And they seem to have made it to look like a jack of all trades because she uses a variety of different weapons. She isn't just stuck to using a sword. She can't use a bow and arrow or anything. She just uses like a sword, a hammer, and a whip. So we'll go in game and we'll look at her passive. It is called the Master of War. Upon giving or receiving hits from basic attacks, Bellona gains protections and movement speed for 5 seconds. That stacks up to 5. So the more she is attacked, the faster she will move. So that sounds great, doesn't it? Just, you know, why get attacked in the first place though? But that kind of makes sense for a guardian, but this is a warrior of course. We'll start with her third ability. This is the ability which people recommend clearing camps with. It is called Scourge. Bellona summons a Scourge, dealing damage to all enemies in a line. Enemies hit are disarmed and cannot make basic attacks. Now this is a huge ability because not only does it do a lot of damage when it is in a line, it disarms them. As soon as she uses Scourge, her weapon turns into a whip. And that whip sim somehow disarms them. But disarm is like a new mechanic in, in Smite. It's, it's not a silence, it's not a stun, a knock up or anything like that. It's new. It means if you're disarmed, you can't do basic attacks. So you can disarm an Artemis, which you just take the bow. You can't use a bow or anything, but you get the point. You could disarm Anher, you could grab his spear and just throw it away. And you can also disarm weird gods such as Hebo. What are you going to disarm him from? You, you take off his arms? Look, that is a, a hilarious stroke, okay? If you don't get it, you suck. So in this footage you can see Bakasura just going nuts trying to kill me. I was pretty low, I was diving a tower. And he would have killed me, but I used Scourge, I disarmed him, and I saved myself from getting killed. It's a great ability for that. And just this ability on its own, to me, makes this god a high tier choice. If you want to see an in-depth post about the disarm mechanic and who exactly Beldonna counters really well, then look in the description below and you'll be able to see this. It's just a Reddit post by some guy, it's pretty awesome. Her first ability is called Shield Bash. Lona dashes forward and bashes with her shield, dealing damage and slowing enemies. Bologna gains one stack of block for each enemy hit. Block absorbs all damage from a single basic attack and reflects a portion of the damage around her. So you can use this as an escape, though it is a really short distance, be like Kumba's ultimate. It's not really designed to escape, it's designed to actually charge in there with your shield. Bologna just charges forward a short distance and she absorbs the attacks. And all those basic attacks which hit her will be distributed, um, as, far, as far as I understand it, it will be distributed to enemy gods near, who are nearby Bologna at the time. I'm not exactly positive, it might just be, yeah, it, it says block reflect, so it might just be a straight reflect back to that god who was doing the basic attacking. But this is a pretty good skill because not only does it absorb abilities if you are running into a battle, but you can also chase down people and kill them with it because it does slow them. And once you use that, and once you use that, Bologna grabs out her shield, pulls it out, and starts doing basic attacks with that. Her second ability, called Bludgeon, is where she summons a hammer and spins, hitting every enemy around her and then smashing forward in an overhand attack. So it has two points. It has the part where, as soon as she activates it, she swings her hammer around her, damaging everyone around her, and then jumping up in the air and choosing where she can hit. It's all one cast, so you can't exactly stop halfway through. But the overhead attack is a big damage dealer in this move. The more enemies you hit with your first uh, action of the bludgeoning move, the more the second part of the animation will actually hurt. You would think this would be a stun because it is a hammer, but she doesn't really have any stuns except for her ultimate. But just with this ability, bludgeon, scourge, shield bash, all that so far, she's a jungler. That's what it looks like. Now, now when they last made a female warrior, they kind of stuffed up and they changed her to a, an assassin. Of course, that is Nemesis. So they, it looks like they might have to do that again because she looks to be a great jungler at the moment. I don't have much experience with her though, but she looks very, very, very fun in the jungle and the solo lane. And finally, her ultimate ability is called Eagle's Rally. It is a leap where Bologna plants a Roman flag granting protections and increased physical power to allied gods. Enemies directly under where the flag is placed take damage and are stunned for one second. 
So once you do put this ultimate down, you will see that it has two circles. It has a mini circle right where the flag is, which you can hardly see, and then a huge circle which can cover an entire lane. If you want to stun someone, you have to hit them in that tiny area where the flag is, so you have to be pretty precise with it. And everyone outside of this circle and inside of it, which are your teammates, they get a buff. They get extra protections and extra physical power. So uh, it, you can think of it a bit like owner's ring except people can run out of it and it's I don't think it's that huge and it doesn't really slow the enemy so I, I would see this ability being used more as an, an initiation tool as a stun. So that's Bloana, it's pretty basic so far. I, I quite like her at the moment. She's a, a female warrior which looks to be very comfortable in the jungle. I, I really like her abilities. It seems to make sense for a guardian. Like, that's what I thought she would be. I thought there was they would make Bologna the god of war. Oh sweet, guardian. You know, they kept showing all these screenshots, teasers and things and everything was pointing to guardian, guardian, guardian. And then I heard one day that she's going to be a warrior and I'm like, okay fine, it's been a long time since we last got a warrior. But she looks to be really fun. As for how effective she will be, of course she is banned for two weeks. Most people don't even have her leveled up so they can't even play her in league mode. As far as the ranking in the tier list, I would give Bologna a solid S tier. She seems pretty powerful, more powerful than what I would say balanced is, but of course she just came out. Gods are usually either overpowered or underpowered. She could be perfectly balanced. I don't know. As far as gods which counter her, a lot of mages do because they are ability focused instead of basic attack focused. So gods such as Hebo and even some assassins like Bastet. Well, on the other hand, gods which she would be doing really well against would be Arachne and Rama. They both rely on basic attacks to do a lot of their damage. So does Bakasura. So it seems like she has a place in this game. That whole disarm mechanic is really new to Smite, and it makes a lot of sense for what the god is. She's a god of war. She's a master of weapons. So if you fight her, of course she'll know how to handle your weapon. She'll just grab it and throw it away just for you know a few seconds. But what gets me is that how... Does she disarm Mercury? That's just weird. Now looking down the tier list from the top to bottom, it's it's hard to say what the tier list is at the moment because I think Smite has been the most balanced it has ever been. I couldn't really pick a top god. Jablanke is very powerful if you get a good run with him. Athena isn't affected so much thanks to the new distance where you have to gain money from creeps. So she can always be in the lane. She doesn't have to go through the jungle all the time thanks to her ultimate. And Thor is just a great jungler, he's pretty easy to play compared to a lot of the other junglers. While Agni, Agni is uh, well Agni may be a bit weird for some people but I believe people are either an Agni person or a Poseidon person. What do you think is a better god? And I will almost always say Agni because he has that dash which is really unique for mages, it's a great tool. You can use that for clearing waves and escaping and also initiating. He has that gas so he has multiple ways to stun you and he has basically three ultimates while Poseidon just has one big ultimate. They both have their utility, I just prefer Agni. But I believe a shift in the meta is gonna happen because people are gonna start getting comfortable with this new map, they're gonna start jumping over walls and everything, they're gonna try and invade. Like what I have seen is the dual lane get their purple buff stolen a lot, so definitely look out for that. Maybe try to ward some more at the start. But expect people to choose gods with a jump because they can jump away and Ymir now has his new skin, an updated skin model, and what Ymir really hates is gods which can jump over his wall out of his ultimate, so another reason for people just to choose jumping gods. I, I would include Scylla and Hades to this, they can't exactly jump over a wall but they can go under it. And because of this, who benefits the most when a team uses jumps? A Willix, she uses her ultimate and she pulls the person who has just used the jump straight back to her and of course she can do a lot of damage that way. So I recommend trying her out, I got a build set up for her. On the screen, check it out, it's Bumper's Mask, War, Tabby, Jotun's Wrath, pretty typical for assassins. Then you have a choice, it's either Brawler's Beat Stick, the new item called the Crusher, and Tana's Vein. This is all basically for penetration. If they have a healer and you find yourself fighting them a lot, Brawler's Beat Stick is a great item. If not, the Crusher and Tana's Vein do pretty well as well, but don't forget that the Crusher might have a very situational passive. It is cheaper and it has pretty good stats, a lot of penetration with it. And then a Willix goes in either one of two parts. She goes either into Kinsace because she likes killing tanks. She finds herself against Chax, Hercules. Not exactly guardians, but very tanky gods. Or she goes Executioner. And then Rage because crit's awesome. And then I would suggest uh, building a situational item. Either Magi's Blessing, Runic Shield or Void Shield. Now with these kind of pitches, I don't want to... 
I don't want to spell it out for you because it is important that you know how to counterfeit, you know what all the items do. I'll just show you the pictures and show you what I have seen a lot of and show you the branches like like why do people go into this path or that path and I'll be doing them more in future. Just so maybe you can follow along. Maybe it's just a bit of build or use a build yourself and see what works for you. Because everyone has their own style. The one build doesn't suit everything. You gotta adapt. As for the tier list, no huge changes. Some hunters have gone up a bit. They've proven they are far more useful in group fights than gods such as Cupid and Jubilanke. Tier Chak have gone up. Very dangerous at the moment. So has Hades. He has a ton of life still. It's insane. And then down towards the bottom, the Hell, Zeus, Nox and Bacchus. I think they definitely deserve their spots down the bottom. I've tried them all. They just don't seem very effective at the moment. They are very squishy guys, except for Bacchus, of course, he's a guardian. He just, he needs mana, and, and with the current meta, he can't have blue all the time, and he doesn't get as much gold as what he used to, so he's just not as good. Although, if you have no Willix on your team, choose Bacchus. He's awesome, because he has all those knockups. Apart from that, I hope you liked the video. It's a pretty short video compared to the last Smite Conquest video, because not much time has passed through this. The, the meta hasn't changed too much. There's not much to talk about. Mainly the new god. So what do you think of her? Have you tried her? I want to know your opinions if you want to post that in the comments. And any feedback on the video is appreciated because that helps me make better videos which you would like to see. And this is for helping people who want to stay up to date with the smite meta. It changes every now and then especially with each patch. So I hope this helps you and I hope to see you next time.